the time got away from me. Uh, I am Stephanie Meyer of Project Vibrancy, and I am here today to do a meal planning, batch cooking demo for you guys. I'm not gonna demonstrate cooking a lot of food. I actually prepared uh, some of the ingredients and the component parts that I'm going to be working with ahead of time. But what I'm going to do is talk you through why I choose batch cooking as the way to meal plan. Uh, there are lots of different ways to meal plan. I'm sure you've experimented on your own with different ways. You can certainly be cooking entirely from scratch every night, uh, or there's kind of the meal prep process where uh, you might cook one meal, just a lot of it, and then plan on eating that same meal uh, two or three times during the week. And those are both totally legitimate. I just have found that for myself and for my clients that that doesn't get you past the barriers to consistently meal planning and consistently cooking and eating healthy food every night uh, because the barriers, as I see them, are one, getting really bored with the food. And so if you're just eating the same meal over and over again, that tends to get boring for people and then they kind of fall away from doing it. Uh, and, um, and then also uh, not having um, enough sort of interest in the various parts that you're going to be putting together, like enough flavor and enough um, texture and enough variation to get you through an entire week. Uh, so the other barrier, big barrier, of course, is just not having a plan at all. And uh, I'm sure you know what happens when you make the decision to eat healthy food and you go to the store and you buy a whole bunch of groceries and you put them in the fridge and you probably do make a really healthy meal that night. And then maybe you make a healthy meal the next night. And then because you didn't have a plan for how are you gonna use the rest of those ingredients, Life gets in the way, of course. You're really tired when you get home. Uh, kids are hungry, you're starving, you're tired. Willpower is depleted at the end of the day. And cooking from scratch and going through recipe books and looking up recipes online is just too much work on a day-to-day -day basis. And then you kind of lose your groove and you end up throwing a pizza in the oven or you end up calling for takeout and you lose your momentum and you lose uh, your ability to stick with the healthy eating every day that is what really changes someone's health. Um, you know, certainly there's nothing wrong with eating better once or twice a week, that's better than eating, uh, not eating well any days a week. But to really get the results that you want and if you have an autoimmune disease, of course, and you're following AIP, um, you know, to really see the results and really get the healing and really start to dig in and learn about food sensitivities and what foods are gonna work for you in the future, there needs to be the consistency of, uh, of eating well every day. And so um, having a plan is the way to really stick with that healthy eating. And the other thing is that it saves a ton of money. So when you buy ingredients that you don't know what you're gonna use them for, you know, they end up going in the garbage, which feels terrible. I mean, nobody likes to throw food away and it feels wasteful and it is wasteful. And uh, so having a plan so that you use those healthy ingredients and that you only buy what you need and so that you're uh, reducing food waste is really, really important. So, um, and so batch cooking for me is the way to meet all of those goals. And by batch cooking, I mean cooking two proteins each week because one isn't enough. It's not gonna get you through the week uh, and it's not gonna get you enough variety. Uh, that means for me making uh, two condiments because condiments are the way to add flavor and to really keep things interesting. Uh, then you can really batch cook pretty simple proteins without a ton of ingredients and you know long recipes and all that kind of stuff. You can make pretty simple food and then you're adding the flavor with condiments uh, and then really able to mix things up as the week goes along. So that's why the project, uh, why Project Vibrancy Meals has a big focus on condiments and everybody loves the condiments so much because they uh, can take simple food and make it really interesting. 
and delicious. And by the way, the condiments are healthy also. Like this chimichurri here is a puree of uh, really vibrant greens and herbs. Those are very nutritious. Garlic, really healthy fat, uh, fresh lemon juice. So making your own condiments versus buying them at the grocery store is a game changer for your health and then they just taste so much better also. So, um, so two condiments. Uh, in this case, I made this chimichurri as I said and then I caramelized some onions. I think of caramelized onions as a condiment and I sort of use them in that way and so I have that here today. And then I like to cook a starch. Uh, for today I did white potatoes because that's what I had but I'll often do sweet potatoes and I write sweet potatoes into the meal plan for people who are following AIP and they work interchangeably really beautifully. Uh, and then I usually chop some vegetables. Uh, in this case, today I decided to do broccoli rice. I like to do, I like to rice my own vegetables versus buying the frozen bags just because I like the texture better when I do it myself. But, you know, if you love the, um, the chopped, you know, cauliflower rice that's frozen and that you can buy, um, I'm a big fan of it. That's a, an example of a packaged food that is really just, um, Riced cauliflower and it doesn't have anything else in it. So, uh, but in this case, I did broccoli. You can't usually buy broccoli rice, and I really like it. I also like celery root rice. That rice is really beautifully, and uh, I like to chop that ahead of time so it's ready to go. And then, uh, and then I always make broth. This is uh, chicken broth here. I don't make chicken broth every week. I write chicken broth recipes into each week of Project Vibrancy meals because I never know when you're gonna need to make broth, but it often turns out that it doesn't need to be every week because you can make a big batch and I give very detailed instructions for freezing it. So, uh, so I usually don't have to do it every week, but every couple of weeks I make a big batch of uh, broth and freeze it and it's an incredible component part for putting together fast dinners, really tasty sauces, great soups, um, you know, you can cook in it. It just is uh, an incredible ingredient to have in your freezer. And when you make it yourself, then you know uh, that it has been made with very high quality bones. And it also fits with batch cooking really beautifully because if I roast a chicken, for instance, as my pro one of my proteins for the week, then I'll immediately take those bones and get a uh, pot of broth going either in my Instant Pot or on top of the stove. And so it's just a great way to be using up all of the uh, ingredients that you're going to be batch cooking with. So the proteins that I chose, I've got in this pot um, a braised pork shoulder. In this case, I seasoned it pretty simply because I know that I'm going to do additional seasoning with the condiments. So I braised a pork shoulder. I like to braise in the oven versus the Instant Pot. I just like the texture better. Uh, and I just kind of get it going first thing and then I do the rest of my batch cooking while it's cooking and that seems to work out really nicely but obviously you can totally use an instant pot to braise and then in this skillet I have seasoned ground beef and that's usually how I do the proteins I'll do a roast and then I'll do a ground meat because it's cost effective and you can add a ton of great flavor to it uh, sometimes I'll make meatballs and then I'll make a big batch because meatballs freeze so beautifully. I have many great meatball recipes, by the way, on my blog, Fresh Tart, and I think in most of them I do give freezing instructions, and I write a lot of meatball uh, recipes into Project Vibrancy Meals as well, and then give freezing instructions there too. But in this case, I just did a saute of seasoned ground beef, and uh, and then I will you know probably use it a couple of different ways as the week goes on. So this sort of gives you a sense of how a batch cooking session comes together. A couple of proteins, some cooked veggies. I cooked uh, these mushrooms. I uh, did the caramelized onion and the chimichurri as the condiments. Made a starch, in this case potatoes, and then did some chopping of vegetables. So this is just gonna demonstrate basically three meals right here. Uh, in my everyday life and in the meal plans that I write, I write enough for six days because uh, 
that gives the option of having dinner at home most of the nights of the week or if you know you're going to be going out a couple of nights then you can take the food as lunch to work and sort of you know decide when or you can eat it for breakfast if you want to um so for project vibrancy meals i do six enough for six meals basically and you can eat them whenever you like uh but for right now i'm just going to do three meals and show you how i would put this together now so on the first day i always eat the uh the roast that i braised and so i would create um a meal i have my little my little tv demo bowl under there i would create a meal i always do create a meal with that roast the first night it's easy uh it you know i put to use some of these component parts of course and um and then i store the rest of it to use it in a different way um throughout the rest of the week but in this case i'm i'm going to use this uh broccoli rice i think of it as a traditional roast dinner i mean seriously like a sunday dinner and i love having sunday dinner i love the routine of it and the tradition of it and it just is a very nice way to start the week so i start with that broccoli rice and then i you know would add this um, very tender, totally falling apart. Uh, I'm gonna move this pork roast. Put it right there. So that you guys can see it a little bit. But I've got the pork roast there. And then I've got other ways of making this really um, interesting. I've, I cooked some of these mushrooms, so I would put these on here. If I had made the carrots that I intended to make, then I would have actually had this with carrots for just a little more color. And uh, you could add some caramelized onion here. I'm not going to because I've already got those um, mushrooms and they already have kind of that, you know, browned um, taste and they have that soft texture and I don't really need any more of that. But what I am going to add is the chimichurri because the pork shoulder is rich and I like to have a really tart condiment if I'm eating something. Uh, that's rich like that. So then that's how I would finish this dish and use this condiment um, to create this dinner. So that's meal number one out of those component parts. So pork roast, broccoli, uh, rice, in this case mushrooms, it probably would have been carrots otherwise, and then chimichurri to pull it all together. And that is one uh, fantastic meal. Then uh, I would go ahead, this pork roast is gonna show up later in the week. I'm gonna crisp it up and use it to top a salad, probably. I usually write a salad into uh, each week of Project Vibrancy Meals, and uh, and that salad is going to be dressed with the chimichurri. I'll you know have radishes and chop some fresh veggies. That would probably be something I did ahead of time, and create a totally different uh, meal from it, or it could be tacos. Um, with some plantain tortillas and that chimichurri and uh, you know perhaps even that broccoli rice again but it would be a totally different meal um, and would have a different flavor profile to it because the reality is that Americans are pretty used to eating a different cu different cuisines uh, all throughout the week so we're lucky uh, and we've grown up this way now, uh, eating, you know, Chinese food for dinner one night, having Indian food for dinner another night, you know, eating and having burgers uh, another night, having Italian food another night, and that is the American palate. So it's really important to respect that and build that, uh, that variety into your meal planning so that you actually stick with it and you really love the food. If you don't like the food, then you're never gonna stick with it, so. That's really important. So I'm gonna set the pork over there and show you the next protein, which is, um, this is the ground beef. So I seasoned this ground beef with some of the chimichurri as I was making it, or as I'm creating uh, this next dish. So this is the seasoned ground beef. It was already cooked. I pulled it out of the fridge, put it into this pan, um, I'm gonna add some chimichurri to it to just give it extra, um, a little extra flavor. I'm not gonna use tons of it because it's also going into the topping for this. What I'm making here is a cottage pie, like a super fast, very delicious cottage pie. Um, some of the 
broth is going to go into here and there's a little bit of thickener in the beef um, a little bit of arrowroot starch so that this together when it bakes in the oven creates the gravy that goes with cottage pie but you're not having to even do that ahead of time because you've already prepared these other parts um, in this case I might add some of the caramelized onion to this just because it would taste so good oh I know what I'm gonna do with it I have an idea <laughs> I'm making this up as I go along uh, definitely I'm gonna add mushrooms here or if this had been carrots I would be putting carrots in the cottage pie but it doesn't have to be um, anything super complicated I just sort of add those in there and then this potato that I mashed I love to season this topping so instead of this being mashed potatoes that have dairy in them I just use um, some of the chimichurri so this is how I'm using the condiments as the week goes on I'm not just putting it on top of food I'm actually cooking with it and um, you know I will you put that in a pan and uh, cook eggs with it for instance um, and I'm gonna put some of the caramelized onions in that uh, mashed potato topping but the oil in there is what's gonna make you know a really nice mashed potato and it gives it a pretty green color and uh, and then the caramelized onions in there too will just add more flavor and this is it there's no dairy in this and this is and yet they're gonna be so flavorful and uh, and then you know have enough oil in them that they will get like brown and crispy and then I just put that on top and this is what you would do on the weeknight um, this takes literally no time because this is already all prepared and that's why having these batch cooked ingredients um, in the fridge is the game changer and is the reason that you are actually gonna make dinner instead of getting takeout so I'm um, Put this on top do a little crosshatch pattern this would go in the oven and I would run it under the broiler to kind of brown up the top um, and then I would serve this with a salad um, with you know I would have probably made another salad dressing if I were going for all six meals so that I could have uh, a salad like a turmeric I was gonna do like a maple turmeric dressing and to have that with this kind of richer cottage pie um, and yet still a pretty light version of cottage pie uh, because it doesn't have you know all the cream and all that kind of stuff in the potato topping so anyway that would go into the broiler and that would be that dish that is literally how long dinner comes how long it takes to pull dinner together when you've got these batch cooked component parts and then the last one um, still you know using up everything I'm gonna do a quick frittata or show you guys a quick frittata uh, I don't include eggs all that often in PVM and when I do I of course give a different dinner for the autoimmune protocol uh, which is usually fish so it might be salmon that is broiled and you know would use the potatoes in a different way um, but I thought I'd go ahead and show you this um, so for this frittata I've got some eggs here and I've got these other potatoes that I had cooked and I'm gonna use those in the base of it just like a great you know classic frittata with potatoes I'm, it's not I would have more potatoes to fill this uh, entire thing in I would definitely use some of the caramelized onions this is a perfect spot to use them and this is what's saving you time because when you have to come home from work and chop and um, saute and all of that kind of pre work is what you know makes the difference between a dish that comes together in 15 minutes and a dish that takes 45 minutes uh, because you did that ahead of time in that batch cooking session and you have that already ready. Um, I'd probably throw some mushrooms in too because I have them. And, uh, and then use a little bit of the chimichurri to season the eggs. And that's how it all comes together. And this again is going to be a meal that um, I'm going to broil this after <laughs> we're done here. Um, but this frittata is going to be absolutely beautiful. And then I would serve this with a salad too, um, with some different vegetables that were chopped ahead of time and uh, were ready to go. 
So this is what I wanted to show you guys because I talk about it all the time and I give away a free meal plan and if you've um, you know taken a look at it and and ha but haven't cooked with it, you might not see just how unbelievably fast it is to make dinner the rest of the nights of the week when you've already created these component parts and they really took you know two maybe three hours to uh, prepare on the weekend but the payoff is that this is how fast it happens literally exactly like this and this would go under the broiler for you know whatever um, I cook it I think I actually would cook it a little bit on the cooktop and then finish it under the broiler and the entire thing is ready in 10 minutes and you have an amazing dinner with all this nutrient-dense food um, that you're gonna feel really good about eating and it's going to allow you to stick with the healthy eating and get past the barriers of your own tiredness, your own low willpower, uh, you know, knowing that you're just not willing to spend an hour making dinner, looking up recipes in cookbooks and uh, or trying to cook online uh, or look up recipes online when you already are so tired. So if it's done ahead, then you stick with it. And that is the beauty of meal planning and batch cooking. So hopefully you got the picture here. Uh, I am opening fall membership to Project Vibrancy Meals. If you are interested in joining for a month, you can join a month at a time and try it out, see how it works for you, uh, really get the hang of uh, this process. Um, I write out the entire grocery list for you. I research all of this, and then I walk you through step by step the batch cooking process, which is a skill. It is uh, my goal is to really teach people how to cook, and I love it when I have PVM clients who come back and say, "I can cook now," <laughs> and I can look at ingredients in my fridge and see meals instead of just seeing ingredients and I have no idea what to do with them. So I love teaching people to cook. So there's a lot of detail in the meal plans where I walk you through which thing to make first, when you wash the pan, how you store it, where you store it. I have you freeze some of the food. I have you refrigerate some of the food depending on where it's gonna show up in the week. Uh, and then I make sure in the grocery list that it's very detailed so that you're not wasting any food. Like I have you literally buy, you know, uh, six scallions or, you know, a, a one cup of parsley leaves, you know, so that you can really customize um, and tailor your shopping so that you're not buying big bunches of things and then end up throwing food away. So uh, I'm very excited to have membership open. I only do it a few times a year. Uh, if you've been to the website, you see that there's a wait list most of the time, and uh, I'm going to put the link below uh, to the uh, page that describes the entire meal plan. Go ahead and read that, and if you have questions, let me know, and I'd love to have you jump, jump in and join for the fall, and uh, <laughs> if you've been out at the state fair, this is for you Minnesotans. I was out at the fair last night and ate, you know, of course gluten-free deep fried food, uh, drank gluten-free beer and wine, ate popcorn, um, and felt relatively, I felt it this morning. I definitely felt it and I'm super excited to get back to healthy eating and I suspect that's how you're feeling too. <laughs> now that summer has come to an end, kids are back to school and uh, the fair is gonna be coming to an end and it's time to get back to healthy eating and I'd love to help you do it. So. Certainly let me know if you have questions, put a link below. Uh, I am going to be coming back and answering questions and I would love it if you shared this demo with people. If you've got friends that you know are struggling to either implement the autoimmune protocol and really stick with it, which can be really tough without meal planning, um, or who just love to eat healthy food and they need some new moves and would like to be way less stressed out at the end of the day. So. Uh, it works for all of those purposes, and I'm super excited to share it with you. So, all right, you guys, I'm going to stop there. Thanks for watching the demo. Thanks for being here. And uh, let me know if you have questions. I'll be back uh, probably answering questions tomorrow uh, and over the weekend. So, 
I'll see you soon. Okay, thanks. Bye, you guys. I have to walk over here to shut this off. Take care.